lectures, we have discussed about the various uh, concepts in the basic microscopy and these concepts will be encountered in the coming lectures. Those were, if you can recall, they were like absorption, refraction, diffraction, magnification, contrast, resolving power and so on. We have discussed about geometric optics and physical optics and how the formation of image takes place was explained. Also, we have discussed about the compound microscope, various components of compound microscope. Like if you could recall, there is a source of illumination, the condenser lens which condenses the light, the objective lens through which uh, uh, intermediate image formation takes place and finally, ocular or eyepiece which forms the final image which will, which will be finally captured by the eye. Now, uh, both in here in subsequent lectures, we are going to discuss about specific microscopy techniques in both light microscopy and electron microscopy. Now, light microscopy and electron microscopy if they are compared, the basic concepts remains the same, but there are certain specific differences between the two techniques. In light microscopy, for example, uh, light source is simple halogen lamp or simple white light is utilized. Uh, in contrast, in electron microscopy, you have a beam of electrons which is generated from electron gun as we will discuss in later. Uh, then lenses, the light microscopy, the lenses are glass lenses or optical lenses as we call them. Whereas, in electron microscope, you have the electromagnetic lenses, uh, which are all we will be utilizing all like condenser objective, but they are electromagnetic lenses. Uh, light microscopy, we do not have an enclosed system, you do not need vacuum, but in electron microscopy, you need vacuum. So, it is like enclosed uh, chamber, which is evacuated. So, there are a uh, whole lot of differences between light microscopy and electron micro microscopy. In terms of resolution also, the you get much higher resolution, manifold higher resolution in electron microscopy, because the wavelength of electrons ca can be modulated and it is much lower than the light microscopy. In light microscopy, at best you can go a slightly less than the 0.2 micrometer, uh, which uh, will reveal only certain details, but in electron microscopy, you can go to much higher details. Uh, uh, another important part or compare, uh, if you compare light microscopy and electron microscopy is the specimen preparation. Electron microscopy requires extensive specimen preparation, where you cannot use live cells and they have to be dehydrated. Uh, so, uh, then you have to add the mass to the specimen, so that electrons can be diffracted. Whereas, in light microscopy, both stained and live cells could be utilized. For example, certain techniques uses uh, stained cells, but certain other techniques contrast can be created by uh, changing or creating certain optical phenomena, where you can visualize the object as we will discuss later on. Now, in subsequent lectures, we are going to discuss a specific techniques and let us introduce you to these techniques here. First, in light microscopy, we are going to discuss bright field microscopy, dark field microscopy, phase contrast microscopy, polarization microscopy, fluorescence microscopy and in electron microscope, we are going to discuss the transmission electron microscopy and scanning electron microscopy. Now, bright field microscopy uh, as it says that the background is bright and the image which is formed is relatively darker than the background. Now, if you could recall when the light from condenser passes to specimen, a specimen uh, there are two kinds of lights which will come out of a specimen into the objective. One is diffracted or altered light another will be unaltered or direct light or uh, undeviated light. Now, uh, non-altered or direct light forms the background, which is bright and the image formation is relatively dark. Now, here uh, many biological specimens are transparent, so staining is a must.
uh, in many cases. And but only problem is that the staining uh, you cannot use live cells because staining kills the cells and also a lot of processing is required. Now, other techniques which we are going to discuss in the in the lectures uh, will not be uh, requiring the staining of the specimen rather there will be a contrast will be created with other uh, methods which we are going to discuss. Dark field microscopy is first such technique where uh, uh, as it says the, uh, the background will be dark and a bright image will be formed against a dark background. We will discuss in detail how this works out, how the image formation takes place in dark field microscopy. The next one will be phase contrast microscopy, which is a very valuable technique for cell and molecular biology people. Now, here uh, a simple optical trick is utilized to create contrast. Uh, I think all of you know that when the rays of light passes through uh, a specimen, they encounter different components of the specimen and depending on the optical density of the components, the light will be diffracted accordingly and it will be retarded because of that phenomenon. Now, this creates or this leads to the phase differences that is the waves are now uh, in comparison to the original wave they uh, there are phase changes have been taken place. Now, this phase change cannot be seen by our eyes and uh, because these are not intensity differences. So, in this our simple optical trick leads to the changes in phase to the intensity differences that is phase change is translated into intensity differences and uh, we will discuss in detail how it is done. Uh, uh, in a brief like uh, the scientist or physicist who did that, he used one direct beam that is reference beam and the uh, uh, diffracted beam which were later combined to form contrast and we will see how that is done in detail. Next technique which also does not require uh, staining is the polarization microscopy. Now, polarization microscopy is a very useful technique for certain samples which cannot be stained and even they sometimes cannot be visualized in phase contrast microscopy because uh, uh, the phase increments are not uh, large enough to create intensity differences. Now, these are uh, polarization microscopy utilizes accessories like polarizer and analyzer. Uh, here you require a sample which has a particular structural arrangement like either the individual particles are arranged in a parallel array, array or in form of stacked disks. Now, this uh, leads to uh, a particular phenomenon called form by refringence by these arranged particles, where a polarized light will be allowed to pass only if it is parallel to their uh, individual arrangement. So, this particular technique is very useful for certain applications and uh, utilized for those samples which cannot be visualized by staining or by other techniques like phase contrast microscopy. Uh, next one which we are going to discuss is fluorescence microscopy. Fluorescence microscopy utilizes the phenomenon of fluorescence, where a fluores fluorescent substance absorbs the smaller wavelength, particular wavelengths and then emits the longer wavelengths which could be which are in visible region. And uh, this phenomenon could be utilized for lot of different applications like locating a particular substance like protein or uh, DNA or other macromolecules or other components, various components at different times in vivo. Uh, so, this is a very useful technique. Now, fluorescence microscopy requires the use of certain fluorescing substances because not many biological substances are uh, fluorescent in itself. So, you have to have external fluorophores to be utilized in this. Other extension of fluorescence microscopy is confocal microscopy, where you can use thick uh, specimen or tissues. Uh, remember all these techniques right from light microscopy and electron microscopy require thin slices of a specimen, 
which are in micrometers and nanometers in electron microscopy. And because otherwise absorption of light or other uh, problems will occur in image formation. So, uh, but in confocal microscopy, you can use thick specimen and it utilizes fluorescence uh, optics. Now, here you can focus uh, at different times or you can raster the whole specimen in depth or in sides and you can uh, take various pictures, uh, which are umpteen number of images, which can be later combined to give three dimensional look or three dimensional uh, picture of the whole specimen. So, that is a very good uh, technique for visualizing three dimensional structures. Uh, uh, also in phase contrast microscopy, uh, there will be extension of uh, phase contrast, which we are going to discuss is differential interference contrast microscopy, uh, where uh, you have uh, a three dimensional quality images are obtained, because of uh, certain uh, interference uh, techniques being involved in here, where you use lot of uh, prisms and other accessories to make that happen. So, these were the techniques, which will be utilized in electron uh, in the light microscopy. Now, the two techniques, which we are going to uh, discuss in electron microscopy is TEM and SEM, that is transmission electron microscopy and scanning electron microscopy. Now, as it says transmission electron microscopy, the image will be formed by transmitted electrons through specimen and the uh, image is formed due to uh, the transmitted electrons from the specimen hitting the fluorescent screen. Now, here uh, very thin slices like I said in nanometer has to be there and there should be a diffracting material in the specimen in forms of form of uh, heavy atoms, which are added during staining and sample preparation. There is extensive sample preparation for electron microscopy. In scanning electron microscopy, rather uh, looking for the details, internal details of, details of the specimen, here surface details are uh, visualized or recorded. So, here rather than uh, a transmitted electron, here back scattered electrons, which may be elastic or non elastic scattering, uh, those electrons will be collected for image formation. And again, for uh, retaining the surface, uh, there are special specimen preparation techniques. So, this was uh, a little introduction to the different techniques of microscopy in light and electron both, which we are going to discuss uh, subsequently. So, let us start with some of the light microscopy techniques. We will start with the bright field microscopy. Now, this is one of the simplest optical microscopy illumination techniques and mostly used in compound microscopes. Like I said earlier, the term bright field is derived from the fact that a specimen is relatively dark contrasted by bright surrounding, because of the, uh, because of the direct light, which forms a bright background. Now, sample is illuminated from below, that is it is transmitted light and observed from above, like we, uh, I have shown you in the compound microscope, uh, uh, that will be the particular arrangement uh, in the microscope. Now, contrast is created by the absorbance of some of the transmitted light in dense area of sample. Now, uh, like I said, as few biological samples absorb light, staining is required to uh, enhance the contrast. Now, for example, there might be certain colored substances or uh, which might absorb light, but otherwise the uh, it is very hard to visualize or make visible the details of the specimen in bright field microscopy. And for staining, there are a lot of different materials, dyes and other uh, things which are there uh, to create contrast. And we will be discussing this in the end of the light microscopy section in a specimen preparation. Now, bright field microscopy may use either critical or colour illumination and it consists of a light source, which is a simple halogen lamp, condenser, objective and ocular lens or it could be camera to view the samples. So, this is uh, we are not going too much of detail, because it is a simple illumination technique and it is a very direct technique, which is 
uh, widely used in observing the stained uh, specimens. Now, let us move on to the next technique, which where staining of the uh, sample is not required and rather what you do is uh, there are certain optical tricks you apply to create contrast. Now, in dark field microscopy, the bright image of object is produced against a dark background. Uh, many objects now having refractive indices very, very close to their surrounding are very difficult to image in bright field microscopy. And uh, to view these things, there are certain uh, optical uh, techniques have been developed. Dark field microscopy is very useful for counting small particles and observing living unstained preparations. Uh, how does image formation takes place in dark field microscopy? So, before we explain it on the figure, let us understand little bit uh, here. So, in critical illumination, if you could recall, light forms uh, a very solid cone at object plane, that is light coming from condenser forms a solid cone at the object plane as we have discussed earlier. Now, supposing if there is no object in the object plane, so an absence of an object causes field to be brightly illuminated uniformly. Now, here what is done is there is an accessory which is an opaque disk with transparent annulus is inserted just below the objective or in a condenser which causes the cone of light to become hollow. So, what you do is a annular uh, uh, like disk or annular aperture, uh, opaque disk containing annular aperture inserted below the condenser lens and uh, so what will happen? A hollow cone of light will be illuminating the object plane. Now, if there is no object, then it will emerge as another hollow cone through objective. Now, annulus is made sufficiently that is uh, apertures, where apertures are present in the opaque disk, it is sufficiently large that the hollow cone of light which is surrounding the object will not enter the objective. So, objective is made smaller. So, uh, to understand this, no direct light is entering the objective. Now, what will happen? If there is an object placed in the object plane, if there is an object which is uh, placed in or a specimen placed in the object plane, then certain diffraction is bound to happen. And some of the diffracted rays of certain orders will enter the objective. So, what will happen? A bright image, because these are light which is entering the objective, uh, will be formed against a dark background. because direct light does not enter, so there will be dark background, but bright light and certain orders of diffraction enters the objective and they will form a bright image against a dark background. So, the outcome is that you get exceptional contrast, but very limited details here and uh, mainly many details are lost, because you have avoided zero order light, which is direct light. Now, depending on light intensity and degree to which this internal reflections have been eliminated, the quality of the picture will be or image will be better. Now, uh, in dark field microscopy, if you uh, see uh, the, uh, the optics of this, this figure shows you the optics of dark field microscopy. You can see here, the light from the light source is allowed to pass to the condenser, but you have inserted a annular aperture here. Now, these here not shown here in this, but if you see, see here, there is a hole or there is a area, uh, The this is uh, like aperture is there in this particular disk. Now, the light passes from only this area and not from the other part which is opaque here. So, what you get? You get a hollow cone, where this is part is not illuminated here and you get a hollow cone of light illuminating the object plane. Now, this hollow cone of light in absence of an object will directly go and will not enter objective, because you can see the size of the objective or numerical aperture of the objective is smaller. Now, if object is present, there will be a diffracted light. Certain diffracted light, this is just one light ray we have made, but there will be certain diffracted light which will enter the objective and will form an image in the image plane. Now, this will be the bright image 
against a dark background. So, you will get a very good uh, a contrast here. Now, this particular technique is used for uh, this is ideal for objects which are minute living and they have very close refractive index with the surrounding. For example, uh, living aquatic organisms, diatoms, small insects, bones, fibers, bacteria and cells in animal tissue culture can be used here. Non biological specimens could also be utilized here which include uh, say be chemical crystals or thin sections of polymers, ceramics having a small uh, inclusions or other uh, different uh, uh, specimens could be realized. So, dark field microscopy is quite good for uh, uh, particular applications, but not good to get too much of details here. All right. Like for example, it is very good technique to count maybe number of particles like say number of viruses or other particles. Uh, but if you want details, then you have to use other techniques. So, this was about dark field microscopy. Now, let us move on to the next one that is phase contrast microscopy. Now, phase contrast microscopy is one of the most valuable techniques in the field of cell and molecular biology. And here the contrast, the way contrast has been created is, uh, is very fascinating to observe. Now, this particular technique was first described in 1934 by the Dutchman Fritz Jernick and for which he was awarded, uh, awarded Nobel Prize for Physics in 53. Now, this is an uh, contrast enhancing optical technique for transparent unstained specimen like living cells, subcellular organelles, microorganisms, etcetera. Remember, uh, one thing has to be uh, taken into account that thick specimens are not suitable for this technique. Another thing is the samples or a specimen must be non absorbing because that will create intensity differences and will lead to a poor image. Now, in phase contrast microscopy, a minute differences in phases, we will understand how that minute difference in phases is created. Uh, which might result due to very small differences in refractive indices of the components of a specimen through which light passes. These are translated into intensity differences. Uh, remember the phase differences cannot be observed by our eyes, but intensity differences can be observed by our eyes. So, this is very important. Now, here Fritz Jarnik he used a reference beam to create this whole thing. Let us see how this is done. Uh, let us for example, consider a, a transparent disk or a object in a transparent medium and it is being illuminated by parallel light falling perpendicular on that disk. Now, what will happen? If the if refractive indices of the two are different, then light tends to differ in phase due to retardation of light. Now, disk remains is still invisible due to the inability of eyes or the photographic film to detect different faces. So, what we are uh, seeing here that though something is happening, but you are not able to see this. Now, in presence of an object diffraction through the object will also contribute towards image formation, but again how do we visualize this. Uh, if you see this picture, this is here to show you that how the retardation of wave will occur. If you see here, this is a direct wave which is going on. When it passes through the specimen here, then the different components like this is maybe liquid component. Here, this component contains certain more material or has higher optical density. So, you can see differential retardation of the wave here. Like here, it is more retarded. Now, here uh, again another thing is that when it passes, it will be diffracted in different directions and the diffraction will also depend on the uh, how they are placed, how dense an optical object is. So, these things will lead to the phase differences. So, when this phase difference, what we have to do is, it has to be translated into intensity difference. Uh, how it is done? Let us get in here. Uh, 
So, what is done is you place an annular aperture like in dark uh, field microscopy what we have done? We have put in a annular aperture below the condenser lens. Likewise, here also you will be placing uh, an annular, annular aperture or face ring in focal plane below the condenser and which will result in a hollow cone. Uh, we cannot uh, uh, in essence call it a hollow cone, but to understand uh, that uh, it does not mean that hollow cone is uh, completely a hollow cone is illuminating the specimen, but to understand this we say it is a hollow cone of light illuminating the specimen. Now, uh, when you this light uh, passes through condenser annulus and uh, it will pass through the objective, it will make the image of the condenser annulus. At that plate, a particular place, a face plate is introduced, that is after the objective, where the condenser annulus will form its image, a face plate is introduced. So, these are conjugate uh, arrangement, that is it has to be completely coinciding, the face plate has to exactly coincide. Uh, with the image of the condenser annulus, because then only this optical phenomena could be observed. Now, let us see, uh, so what happens then? Once you have uh, uh, done that, then uh, all light rays or all light waves we can say passing through condenser annulus will be either uh, advanced. So, I think I will just show you that on my uh, screen that uh, what is face ring and what is face plate before we go any further. Uh, so, please uh, pay attention to your uh, screen. So, like I was saying there is a face ring and there is a face plate. Now, face ring or annular aperture is something which is like this that you have created uh, two apertures in here through which the light will pass, which will be a parallel light or just we are showing it here through the through the light source. Now, this could be we can say that there is annular aperture that is there is a place aperture through which the light is passing. Now, if you if we have to say face ring has to be formed after the objective lens, the face ring will look something like this and it will completely coincide with this that is these two apertures. Now, what is has been done in this face ring that you have there are two kinds of face rings could be there one is at exactly where apertures are there, you have deposited an extra layer, another at two places. So, what will happen when extra layer is there? The light rays which comes from the objective like there will be condenser first here, then there will be if I make it like this, there will be object plane and then there will be objective lens and through objective lens these light rays will pass through these two places. And uh, so, what will happen is when the wave is going through this place here, then this direct light there will be two lights one is diffracted light another is uh, uh, undiffracted light. Now, this direct light which is undeviated light will pass through this face plate. If it is layered face plate then what will happen? It will be wave will be retarded by one quarter wavelength. So, layering is done in such a way that it will be retarded by one quarter wavelength. There could be another arrangement which could be rather than rather than uh, layering it, it could be grooved there could be a uh, groove could be east in here. Now, when this groove is east in here then what happens that this groove will lead to the advancement of because you have less material in here. So, the light ray passing through this will be advanced by one quarter wavelength. So, it is done in such a way that either in layered form it is retarded one quarter wavelength or it is advanced one quarter wavelength. So, this is just to make you understand that 
how face ring or annular aperture and the face plate is playing a role in here. Now, let us move on again to our uh, uh, slides uh, here. Now, here so what we have tried to understand in this that all light waves passing through condenser annulus will be either advanced or retarded by one quarter wavelength depending on they are passing through grooved or layered nature of face plate. Now, all the waves diffracted or deviated because when you have a specimen then diffraction is ought to occur and all the waves diffracted and deviated by the specimen will not pass through the grooved or the layered area of the face plate. We will see in the figure later on. Now, here diffracted rays will be retarded to a different extent because your specimen will contain various kinds of things. For example, if say you are observing a, a single cell or thin layer of cells, a cell will contain cytosol also, it will contain nuclei also, it will contain Golgi, it will contain mitochondria, uh, it will contain fat droplets also, it will contain ribosomes also. All of these will retard because of differences in refractive indices will retard it differentially. So, you will get uh, uh, the rays or wave frames with different faces here. So, what happens that all the waves which are diffracted which are retarded to a different extents will pass through the other part of the face plate uh, also mainly from other parts of the uh, face plate rather than grouped or layered area, but they will it does not mean they will not pass through grouped or layered area but direct rays will pass from grooved or layered area and they will be retarded or advanced. Now, all the waves will combine both deviated and undeviated to form image at the intermediate image plane. Now, diffracted and deviated waves will be retarded to varying degree uh, like I said due to differences and this will create uh, particularly create different intensity differences. I will see how that is done. So, what you have uh, uh, so, what when the phase difference of diffractive wave due to a specimen, now here you have to understand that as we have seen the direct light passes through grooved or layered, there is a one quarter wavelength retardation or uh, advancement as per the whether it is grouped or uh, it is if it is layered there will be retardation, if it is grouped it will be advancement. Likewise, when the waves pass through the specimen and they are diffracted then there also the retardation takes place and which is assumed to be approximately one quarter wavelength. Like I said different refractive indices will uh, uh, retard it differentially, but one quarter wavelength could be understood as a standard thing approximately. Now, when this is combined with the phase difference created by phase plate the two things will happen. One the object will appear bright against a relatively dark background. So, what does that means? that uh, uh, due to constructive interference. So, what does that mean is when undeviated light is retarded. So, if you remember if it is a layered face plate already the undeviated light or direct light is retarded one quarter wavelength. Now, when you superimpose this uh, with the uh, uh, like uh, one quarter wavelength retarded uh, diffracted wave then both gives a constructive interference and therefore, due to constructive interference you will get uh, uh, a wave which will be more brighter relatively to the background. Other thing can happen that is second option could be that object would be dark, why it would be dark against a bright background because undeviated light has been advanced by the face plate that is grooved face plate and that is called positive uh, face contrast earlier one was called negative phase contrast where it was layered. So, uh, when undeviated light is advanced by one quarter wavelength and deviated light is retarded by one quarter wavelength, then when they combine in the image plane they are out of phase by one and half wavelength that is the condition for destructive interference. So, you will get a dark image against a relatively bright background. So, you will get a very good contrast. Now, let us understand these combination of waves like I was talking about and in this figure you will be able to understand this. If you see here this is if you say this is a direct wave 
all right which is being going and which is retarded one quarter wavelength and this is the another wave which is also retarded one quarter wavelength because of specimen. Now, when these two waves combine then the amplitude is bound to be increased and so the brightness the resultant wave will have higher amplitude and therefore, higher intensity and this will be a constructive interference which will show up as the uh, uh, as the bright uh, image against a dark background relatively dark background we cannot say it is a gray background we cannot say it is a very dark. Uh, in contrast when there is an advancement in the uh, in the light ray or the wave due to the grooved nature of the face plate then this another uh, deviated light which is already uh, one quarter wavelength deviate, uh, uh, retarded which is approximate value then both are out of phase uh, by 180 degrees and finally, what you get resultant wave is of lesser amplitude and so lesser intensity and so you get relatively dark images against uh, a bright background. So, these are two phenomena where you can either use uh, I, you can use either use uh, negative phase contrast or positive phase contrast. Now, to understand this uh, optics of the phase contrast microscopy like I have already uh, discussed, but we can understand by this figure you can see here there is a annular aperture like it was in the dark field microscopy and this is like area where through the light will pass. It passes through condenser lens and illuminates the object plane by supposedly hollow cone of light. Now, deviated light uh, will pass through other parts of the face plate this is face plate and the undeviated light passes through the face where layered or grooved part of the face plate. All right. Now, certain times when intensities has to be balanced then objective could be covered with certain uh, like alumina film or other things uh, which does not change the phase to decrease the intensity of the undeviated light. Now, these ones will combine in the image plane and they will produce the images which are uh, either dark image against bright, bright background or bright image against dark background uh, as per the phase contrast uh, microscopy technique you have used. So, uh, now, if you see here in optical configuration, uh, this is like uh, last time what I have seen this is a simple optical uh, configuration of phase contrast, but if you are utilizing infinity corrected optics then just to show how in the infinity space these accessories optical accessories are added. If you can see here a phase plate is being added between the objective and tube lens and so parallel rays which are uh, uh, like uh, focused at infinity passes through objective and then they are finally, uh, they are focused by tube lens. So, it is the same optics as I have shown you earlier. Uh, so, if we uh, go back and understand this whole thing that simple optical trick has led to the uh, uh, creation of contrast through which you can see the different uh, specimen different components of the specimen very clearly. Like I said the all different components will be bright or dark relatively and to a different extent because of different uh, retardation of the waves and as they combine on the image plane they form a very highly contrasted image. Uh, but there are certain disadvantages also of phase contrast microscopy which needs to be looked into. A major disadvantage of phase contrast microscopy is the unavoidable bright halos which are surrounding the specimen and they are mainly caused due to many factors one is the diffraction by face plate. Now, this particular problem what happens is if you see uh, if you will observe the different images from phase contrast microscopy it is a very valuable very good technique. Here cytosol or cytoplasm will contrast with nuclei, nuclei will contrast with other uh, 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 subcellular organelles present in here and they are very nice pictures are obtained. But if you see the membranes then the surrounding of the specimen will certainly see bright halos and sometimes uh, it is hard to distinguish uh, certain parts of the or components of uh, in that particular area 
uh, due to bright halos or diffraction halos. Now, problem of halos have been solved uh, to a great extent or completely in another interference microscopy technique, which is uh, it is like phase contrast micros uh, microscopy technique, which is called differential interference contrast microscopy. And this uses a complex uh, uh, lens system with prisms and other things to generate uh, diffract, where diffracted and undiffracted lights uh, are combined later on. Uh, and we are going to discuss in uh, coming lectures this particular technique. Uh, so, uh, apart from bright halos which are formed, this is a very good technique to observe details. Now, here not only that, there are a lot of different applications of the, this technique. Like for example, visualization of subcellular organelles or tissues or microorganisms. So, details of this could be observed by phase contrast microscopy. And uh, you can use a single cells or thin layer of cells to observe that without staining. Remember staining is uh, not allowed in this as staining will create intensity differences. So, you require a non absorbing uh, specimen in this case. Dynamic mobility of uh, mitochondria and mitotic chromosomes etcetera can be followed very nicely like you can uh, picture that or you can video record the whole uh, phenomenon as it is going on in real time. Uh, this has been used for diagnosis of tumor cells. It has been used for many other applications in the field of virology, bacteriology, hematology and other areas of biological sciences. So, phase contrast microscopy is one of the most important techniques in microscopy. To sum up the lecture, this particular lecture, what we have discussed today is three techniques. One is bright field microscopy, dark field microscopy and phase contrast microscopy. Now, bright field microscopy, there is a bright uh, background and a dark images formed, relatively dark images formed. Staining is required uh, for transparent uh, objects or specimen and most biological specimens are transparent. In dark field microscopy, in contrast to bright field, here the background is dark and your uh, image is bright, but only thing is because of uh, avoiding of or because of not inclusion, non inclusion of direct light, zero order light, lot of details are lost. So, it is a very good technique, uh, you get very good contrast, but has limited applications. Like for example, you can use it for counting and other things. Uh, so, dark field microscopy has uh, particular use, but it cannot give you lot of details. Now, third technique which we have discussed today is phase contrast microscopy. Phase contrast microscopy has uh, really revolutionized the cell biology, um, observation of cells in cell biology. And this has led to observation of many phenomena which could be dynamic motion of the or movement of the mitochondria or uh, mitotic chromosomes, uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, uh, phenomena which are going during this particular process. Uh, diagnosis of lot of different kinds of uh, cells uh, has been done and lot of other applications has been given. Here the contrast is developed by a face ring annular aperture and a face plate which is conjugate to the face ring. And face plate uh, when deviated undeviated light uh, passes through the face plate, uh, it could be it is advanced or retarded and that leads to the constructive or destructive interference with the diffracted light in the image plane and leads to the image formation a very high uh, good contrast is obtained and you are able to. Uh, see uh, images in vivo under in vivo conditions uh, without any problem. Only background is bright halos, non absorbing specimens has to be uh, used and you cannot use thick specimens. So, we will end this lecture today here and we will continue our discussion in the next lectures. Thank you.